a very warm welcome to the second half of the tutorial one on the course digital signal processing and its application in this uh, tutorial again we'll continue solving some more problems uh, related to weeks 4 5 and 6 of this course so so we'll look at week 5 problem 10 it is very similar to week 5 problem 9 so here we have been given the sequence x of n as sin square of n by 2 and we have to again make certain claims related to the z transform of the function the existence of z transform of the sin square function so we can quickly go through when does the z transform exist or converge so the z transform of a sequence exists or converges when the sequence is absolutely summable for that particular z so this is what we saw in the previous lecture so if we want to check it for any z let's say z equal to 2 so i'll plug in z equal to 2 in place of z here and i'll evaluate the summation if the summation comes out to be finite then the z transform exists and it converges and if not then we say that the z transform does not exist or the sum diverges now we'll make use of this fact to uh, solve this problem so we need to check for two cases like what happens when it is on the unit circle and what happens when it is outside of the unit circle or what happens if it does not exist at all so again sin square of n by 2 will be 1 for n equal to 0 will be 0 for n equal to 2m just to remind sin of x or sin of n by 2 is equal to sine of n pi by 2 over n pi by 2 so when n is equal to 2m sine of n pi by 2 will be sine of m pi and which is 0 so this is 0 and now when n is odd so I'm considering this case when n is equal to 2m minus 1 sin square of n by 2 is equal to sine of 2m minus 1 pi over 2 the whole square by n 2m minus 1 pi over 2 the whole square so which is equal to now we know that sine of 2m minus 1 pi by 2 is minus 1 to the power n and when we'll square it uh, that the effect of that negation goes off so we'll be left with 1 so which is minus 1 to the power 2n which is nothing but 1 so you can write it as 1 divided by 0 0.25 1 by 4 is 0 0.25 pi square 2m minus 1 the whole square so that is why we get the third term now again let's check what happens at z equal to 1 so we evaluate this absolute summation it is 1 plus 8 by pi square 2m minus 1 the whole square now we know that summation 1 by n square n equal to 1 to infinity the bezel sum it is equal to pi square over 6 right so this summation clearly which is equal to pi square over 6 is greater than this summation i am considering only this half so this thing if you write a few terms of the summation it is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 5 square and so on and if you expand this this is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 square i should write 1 by 1 square plus 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 4 square plus so on so we can clearly see that this summation is greater than this summation so if this thing is finite there is no means by which this thing could be infinite so this thing is less than infinity in, in fact you can actually evaluate this summation as an exercise if you know how to evaluate this you can also use properties of Fourier transform to evaluate these summations so we can say that for z equal to 1 for mod z equal to 1 that is on the unit circle this summation is finite so we can claim that the z transform exists on the unit circle so so clearly option 1 would be false because it says that it does not exist for all z we have found at least some set of z 
on which the Z transform exists and that is the unit circle. So this option is true. Let's see if there is any other option which is true since we have been asked which of the following is or are true. So there can be multiple correct options. So now for Z not equal to 1, again we have a similar situation as in the ninth problem. So again we consider two cases. First is when mod Z is greater than 1, strictly greater than 1. So in those cases we can see that this term will blow up because when mod z is strictly greater than 1 minus n will be strictly greater than 0 so z to the power minus n is equal to z to the power some positive quantity let me call it k where k is greater than 0 and as k tends to infinity in this summation uh, k tends to infinity that means as, h, as n tends to minus infinity this z to the power k will tend to infinity. So the summation will blow up and it won't converge. Now again we can look at this sum in the second case when mod z is less than 1. Again this term will be the troublemaker. So z to the power minus n. Now n is positive and so this will be something like 1 by z to the power n. Now here we will start uh, facing problems as uh, n tends to infinity again because as n tends to infinity z to the power n will tend to 0 which will imply that 1 by z to the power n tends to infinity so this will blow up so for both these cases we, we see that our summation diverges now Okay, so, so both these options are false. So the only correct option is option 2. This is false because it includes both z equal to 1 and z greater than 1. That is why it's false because it does not hold for this case. Now, uh, there's one more problem in which we have to consider a digital filter which has been given by y of n is equal to p of n minus k by 4 p of n minus 1 and y p of n is given by x of n minus 2k by 3 p of n minus 1 and now we need to conclude something regarding stability we know that a system will be stable when the poles of the system will lie inside the unit circle so basically we need to find out the transfer function that is y of z by x of z for the for this digital filter and uh, we can then conclude reg something regarding the stability of the system depending on what poles the system has all right and it is not direct since y depends on p and p depends on x so we need to first find the transfer function of p and x, the system p and uh, which includes p and x and then we will use it to find the transfer function of uh, y and x. So let, let me take the, let me call it equation 2, let me call it equation 1. Let me take z transform on both sides of equation 2. So taking z transform on both sides of 2. Uh, we get p of z. I am denoting uh, capital P of z to denote the z transform. This is equal to x of z minus 2k over 3. When we have a delayed function, so we multiply it by z inverse times p of z using this property that z, the z transform of x of n minus k is z to the power minus k times x of z. So when we have a delay of 1, we'll have z to the power minus 1 times p of z. Now let us collect all the terms with p of z on one side. So p of z times 1 plus 2k by 3 is equal to x of z. This gives 
p of z to be equal to x of z divided by 1 plus 2k over 3. Let me call it as my third equation. So I have p of z in terms of x of z. Now let me take the z transform on both sides of the first equation. Taking z transform on both sides of equation 1. I'll have y of z to be equal to p of z minus k by 4 again delay of one unit so z inverse times p of z. Collecting all the terms of p of z together gives p of z 1 minus k by 4 z inverse. Uh, I made a mistake here. Here I'll have a z inverse term. So z inverse z inverse. Okay, so it's because of this term. Now, okay, so now we have p of z, but we need y z in terms of x of z. So we can use equation 3. So using equation 3, we can substitute p of z as x of z by 1 plus 2k by 3 z inverse. So y of z is equal to x of z into 1 minus k by 4 z inverse by 1 plus 2k by 3 z inverse. Okay, so this is our final transfer function. This thing in the green box. Now, now we now we can see that it has a zero at so you set the denominator a numerator zero so z inverse k by four equal to one this implies z at z equal to k by four we have a zero and it has a pole at one plus two k by three equal to zero which implies two uh, k by three z inverse equal to zero which implies z is equal to minus 3 by 2k. So we can see that it has a pole at uh, z is equal to minus 3 by 2k. Oh, okay, I think I, make, I made a mistake. Z equal to 0. This implies z inverse 2k by 3 is equal to minus 1. This implies z is equal to minus 2k by 3. Okay, so we have poles at z is equal to minus 2k by 3. Now, so for the system to be stable, to be stable, the poles must lie inside the unit circle. So all poles must lie inside the unit circle. So we have a pole at z is equal to minus 2k by 3. So this thing, so the if it lies inside the unit circle, that means mod of z should be less than 1. So this gives us mod of minus 2k by 3 should be less than equal to 1. So this gives k is less than or equal to 3 by 2. So let us see if we have an option close to that. Okay, so option 2, option 3 satisfies this, k less than or equal to 3 by 2. So, so we can see that the system will, which is 1.5, the system will be stable when your k is less than 1.5. Yeah, so with this we conclude the first tutorial session for this uh, course uh, digital signal processing and it its applications and thank you for attending thank you